Right. Good afternoon. My name is Angelo Cappa, and I would like to talk to you today about my research, the research I did as part of my master's degree at the University of York. It is about the relationship between community memories and virtual reality, as you can click here. I decided to divide this presentation in three different parts. First of all, I would like to give you a brief background about the case study in order to give you a context of what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to discuss about the main purpose of the research, the way I collected data, and of course my expectations, the reality and the issues I had to face, because let's be honest, we all have to face reality at some point in our lives. Uh, and then, as a third and final part, which hopefully is going to be the most interesting one, I'm going to present to you some of the results I collected and, of course, I, how I intend to continue the research in the future. I think it has potential, but maybe with different approaches, how I intend to, um, to collect more data and have more results. So let's now talk about the, the church, St. Mary Bishop is senior. It was a church in York, right at the city centre, right inside the city walls, built in the 20th century and demolished in 1963. Uh, the church, as you can see here in the map, is close to the main attractions of the city, the heritage attractions, the York Minster, the railway museums, and so on. So it has a strategic position from a touristic point of view as well. And this is a drawing of the church from the 17th century. It shows the church from the north side. Uh, as you can see here, it's a small church with a simple structure. It had three naves inside, separated by columns, and a small entrance from the south. This drawing depicts the church from the north side, so the entrance was on the opposite side. And this is the churchyard as it appears today. It is empty, of course. Uh, but it is really interesting to notice the footprints of the child, which are still there, as you can see. It was really useful to understand where the church was inside the, the yard, and mainly because the community knows about the presence of the church, which was there 53 years ago. Now the church is empty, but some of the people who live there in Bishop is Senior, they go to the, to the yard, especially in summer, with nice days, with sunny days, uh, to have a picnic, to have a break, and so on. So it's still used, the, the yard is still used. This is a, an image from the inside of the church, and it is already a ruin here, so it was right before the church was demolished in 1963. But what, it, what was the main purpose of the research? Well, as the title says, I just wanted to represent people's memories and what they remembered about the church in a virtual environment, in a 3D model. But the main question is, why a 3D model rather than, or virtual reality, rather than other traditional visualization techniques, which are maybe more simple to represent and so on? Well, the answer is simple, and it was mainly related to the fact that virtual reality allows, with its flexibility, allows to represent not just the material past, but even the immaterial one. That's what I thought. You can have animations, <coughs> transitions, different rendering techniques, and so on. You can have post-processing software at the end. So the flexibility was the main reason to why I decided to start to adopt virtual reality. This is the model I made of the church. We all know how virtual reality has been used over the past decades in archaeology. These are just four examples of three appro four approaches. Um, we can use 3D modeling to teach, of course, to visualize theories, to make an impact not just on the general public, but even in future studies to other archaeologists, to research and so on, and of course to visualize places. This is probably one of the most useful ways to use and adopt virtual reality, but I noticed that as, as I was studying at the university that the majority of the projects in virtual reality, and as I've seen today, are related to the material past. We have artifacts, we have buildings, sites, and so on, all represented in a material way, in a, in a 3D environment. And that's when I thought maybe it is possible to represent not just the material past, but even the, 
the immaterial one, such as memories. That's why I wanted to start to mix the material past and immaterial past in a virtual uh, environment. The research is divided into two different phases. During the first phase, of course, I wanted to collect memories. That, that was the main idea. I went to Facebook. There's a group called York Past and Present. As you can see here, there are more than 11,000 people. I took this screenshot just a few days ago. I checked this morning, and there are now 12,000 people. So the group is growing. It is a closed group. Uh, so there are just people from York who live in York or people interested about the history of the city. This means that they are all really engaged with the, with the history of York. There are hundreds of posts, photos, memories, videos every single day shared by this community. They even have a website with all the information, of course, about the city, with videos, the gallery, uh, they even have events and so on. So uh, I asked them, to this community, whether or not they remember this church, St. Mary Bishop is senior, without showing anything else, just a message to see their reaction. And uh, three people answered me. They said, yes, Angelo, I remember the church, but I was too young, so I can't help you. And that's when I faced the issues, the first issues. The main one was the lack of memories. We all have memories in our lives about our past, and of course we remember events, people, years, and so on. We rarely remember a material element of a chart we saw when we were five years old. It's really rare. So this was the first issue. Then the fact that the church was demolished in 1963. Five decades are a lot because you can lose memories. Some people, as I said, were too young at the time. Some of them were already old, so they're now unfortunately dead. Some of them are difficult to reach. They might not use Facebook or different technologies. They might move abroad and so on. And of course, the last issue, which is probably the worst one, was the difficulty, the general difficulty to represent memories and the material past. That's when I decided to start a second phase. Uh, because the main idea, the first idea was to start from the memories, collect the memories and represent them in a 3D model. But then I thought maybe I can do the opposite. And by using virtual reality, I can actually reach people's memories and bring back memories into their minds. So I started the second phase. That's when I realized the 3D model of the church. Uh, there are archaeological excavations made in 1973, so 10 years after the demolition of the church. There are different maps uh, from different centuries, 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries, which show the position of the maps in the, city, in the, the church in the city. Uh, and of course, there are drawings, photos, and so on. And I made this 3D model of the church. As you can see here, it has no textures. It's not a photorealistic model, because that was not the main idea. I didn't want to influence people's opinion. I just wanted to stimulate their memories and then collect them and analyze whether or not it was possible to represent them in this environment. So I went back to the Facebook group and I shared the 3D model, this one. I showed them to the people this model saying, I'm doing this project for the university. Do you remember this church? Do you have any memories? Do you know where it was? I, I didn't mention that it was St. Mary Bishop and Senior. I'm aware that some of the people might have seen my first message, some not, so I'm aware of this, of this issue. But it was interesting because during the first stage I had three messages. Now 25 people were there involved and engaged about the 3D model and the chart. Uh, I have to say, not all of them had memories, but all of them were interested about the project. And I'm aware that when you share a photo on Facebook, uh, that attracts more people rather than just a message. So this might have influenced people on Facebook. But still, I received more messages, and I proved that actually the 3D model attracted more people to, to the discussion and to the, to the research. So the first uh, that I collected was related to the memories. 
I'm going to show you three examples. I had in total seven people who shared their memories. This one is the first participant, and it is really interesting to notice how the memory, as I said earlier, well, not just this memory was not just about the material presence of the church. This person mentioned the headstone in the yard, but it was also about an emotion because this person was scared. So this proved the fact that memories are actually related, of course, to emotions in our lives. Some people had even more specific memories. For example, this person uh, mentioned an year, 1958. So he remembered the year when he saw the church. And he also mentioned a crypt, the buttress of the church, and so on. But still, as you can see here, it is really difficult to represent a memory based on this description. There are not enough data. That's why I started to, uh, and I represented the church by reading the archaeological accounts of the church itself. And of course, there were memories as during the first stage of the research without details. People who were just kids and they didn't remember uh, anything about the church. However, given that 25 people were engaged in the discussion on Facebook, I thought maybe I can collect more data, given that all of them are interested, but not all of them had memories. So I did a survey in order to collect different kinds of data. I showed the people who participated in the survey six different renders of the same model um, from different points of view, different colors, and the image number six, which is the this one, this one, uh, was more a test than anything else because it shows the 3D model in a modern in a modern environment in a modern churchyard. So you can see the photo I took of the churchyard and the 3D model in it in order to give a perspective of how the church used to appear to a person in 1960s or in 1950s. Um, and I asked the people, which one do you think is the most engaging image among them? Well, as you can see from the results, the majority of them said the image number two was the most interesting one and the most engaging one, which was this one. The only one with colors, with a blue sky and with trees, and as you can see here, the others has no colors. There's one black and white and so on. So this proved that people are maybe still related more to traditional ways of representing archaeology in general, such as drawings, paintings, and so on. But then I collected more, more data, and I asked the people, do you think the 3D model, this virtual model, can actually give significance, maybe historical significance, to the area of Bishop Asinio, uh, even if you've never visited the area before? They said yes, as you can see here, of course. And I thought that this was interesting as a new starting point, maybe, because you might not know about the, this church, but you might be interested about the history of the church or the history of the place, because you saw other people sharing memories, because you saw the 3D model and so on. So I'm aware that despite the issues, still the memories I collected were enough to prove that with 3D model, you can stimulate people to share their past with you, and maybe this might be a starting point to preserve the memories in the future. But what if, for example, uh, we use monuments with more visitors? Because the main issue with Samaria Bishop Senior was related to the small community who was there. So I just had 20 messages, three memories, and so on. What if we use a similar approach to monuments such as Stonehenge, the Colosseum in Rome, for example, and so on. You can collect thousands of memories, maybe, because there are thousands of people who visited the, uh, these monuments every year, and probably some of them are possible to represent, not just places, demolished places you cannot visit today, but even places you can actually go and see now, then, thanks to virtual reality, you can also compare people's memories. And in years, maybe in 10, 20 years, for example, what if we would be able to analyze their memories and see whether or not there are specific patterns in what people tend to remember? 
What if, for example, the memories, when you visit a, an archaeological site, are related to your background? Of course, they're related to your background. Or even to the country you're from or to other elements such as uh, whether or not you are interested in that specific area, whether or not you are with friends, with family, and so on. So it might be possible to compare memories. And then I'm aware that by using other technologies, not just virtual reality or at least virtual reality in a different environment such as augmented reality, for example, it might be possible to mix as, as I did in the test, in the survey, like the last image, makes the ancient environment, the ancient uh, monument, with the modern environment, and then mix them together with memories, and then we can use animations, different cameras, in order to understand whether or not it is possible to actually represent memories and preserve memories in the future. I want to conclude by saying that this, is my view, this might be also important to preserve what we have today for the future, not just from the general archaeological sense of view, point of view, of course, as archaeologists, we want to preserve things for the future. But I noticed during the study that people tend to forget their past in just a few years. In 50 years, no one remembered the, the church. And in the next 50 years, no, no one will remember maybe some more other important monuments. So I thought this might be a starting point to preserve not just the object, but also memories and what we remember in the future. Thank you.